Hi everybody, I'm going to do a tutorial today about blood and blood administration in EPIC. So we are going to go through on a playground patient how to do a blood transfusion, some of the tips and tricks um, because it is a little bit cumbersome and kind of confusing in EPIC for the process. I'm also going to send out to everyone the tips and tricks sheet made from EPIC that walks you through the blood. Um, but I think this video will be helpful so you can see the process, where to click, and what it looks like. I'm also going to show you some of the buttons if you need to adjust a blood transfusion or maybe modify an intake or an output related to blood. So let's get started. So this is our playground patient. If we scroll down to the orders here, we are going to find our blood transfusion. And let me, this is the playground, so bear with me. Here we go. So we, oh, we have our um, blood order right here. This is our current order, how to do a few to get this module to work correctly. Um, so we always will see a prepare order that is for blood bank to know what to prepare for us. But then we always have a transfuse order. The transfuse order is for the clinician to know what to transfuse, how long to transfuse it, and some of those infusion details. We're going to be giving one unit of RBCs and we're going to transfuse it over four hours. That is our order. So we are going to speed along the process and we are going to say that we are ready to receive our blood. We want blood bank to send our blood to us. The way we do that is we go to the flow sheets and we can do everything from the blood tab. If you don't have the blood tab, simply go here, facility preference, and search your blood tab and you can pull it over that way. We have our blood tab here. So next, what we are going to do to release the blood, this is how we tell blood bank we want our blood. We go to transfusion report and this is where it gets tricky. You will have other blood products, maybe old orders on here, as well as new orders, so it can be can kind of confusing. The release button is very small, but it will be under blood transfusion orders. And here's our date and our time. This is the most current date and time, and I know that that's for my order. <clears throat> to release it, to say, hey, blood bank, send me my blood you're gonna go ahead and hit the release button right here. So I'm gonna do that now. So just so everyone can see, blood transfusion orders, go to the, your date and time, make sure it's the right product, it's what you just looked at in your order, and go ahead and hit release. It's gonna take a second, and you can see how it turned from release to this reprint button. That's how you know your blood's released. So now we're gonna close this. And you're going to see how that just appeared right here. This is our current blood in which we're going to be administering right here. So that release button activates it so that we can start it. We're now going to say that blood bank, you know, they sent us our blood. I brought in my second person into the room. We've checked it. We've done everything per the blood policy here in Tampa. And now we need to document the start of the blood. To do that, you hit begin blood transfusion. It's gonna have maybe two things on here. This is because I put in two different orders, trying to get the playground to cooperate. But this is the most current one that I want. This is the 1132, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that and hit start. I'm gonna pick my line in which I'm infusing. I'm going to get this screen. This is where you would scan your patient, scan your product, do all your double checks for safety. For today, I don't have a scanner for this playground patient, so we are going to go ahead and override the scan, but you would not do this in real life. I'm going to enter the unit number. I'm going to enter the product code. I'm 
remember for you guys, this, when you scan, would all come across. So you would not be manually entering anything. This is just because we don't have a scanner in the playground. <clears throat> and I'm going to enter my product expiration date. And I'm going to enter my blood type. <clears throat> All right, so now I'm going to put in my rate. My rate is based on my order and the blood I receive. For this patient, I, I'm going to get a unit. A unit could vary between 300 to 400 ml, depending on the unit. We're going to say that the unit in front of me has 400 ml in the bag. That is what I'm going to give because my order says to give one unit. <clears throat> it says to infuse this over four hours. So my rate, therefore, would be 100 to infuse the 400 ml unit bag. If your bag came or your order was in mLs, say this patient was small and we were to give 100 mLs over four hours, I would simply adjust that and make my rate 25 and so on and so forth. But we're going to enter the rate for 100. This is going to be associated flow rate, flow sheet rows and the time that you took it. So this is your vitals. We are, would be documenting on 11.33 for our vitals. If we needed to change this um, to backdate it, this is, we would just adjust this here. Maybe it was actually 11.30, but you guys understand that box. Blood administration volume right here. You do not have to enter this right away. This is gonna be your blood volume. If I put the entire 400 mLs right here, it's going to document it all in one column. But we know that we do our eyes and nose by the hour. So I'm starting this blood administration. I'm actually going to leave it blank. If it ever requires you to enter a blood volume upon initiation, you can go ahead and put zero and enter your volume later in the flow sheet to be more accurate for timing. We would not want to enter the entire blood bag volume because we're not giving it all at 1130. We're going to be giving it over four hours. So in each hour column, I would want to add 100, the next column 100, the next column 100, so on and so forth to show that the patient got what they received per the hour they actually received it. This, I'm always going to put charge complete. This simply just charges for this whole process with blood bank, the blood, and all associated charges. Next, I'm going to enter my vitals if I haven't already done so. In this case, I'm going to um, skip this right now because I'm going to act like I already entered those uh, just a few minutes ago. So I'm going to go ahead and hit accept. <clears throat> It's going to require my dual sign off. So I'm going to hit sign off right here. And in the playground, I'm going to enter the other person. So this is going to be 02. This is my dual sign off. And you can see it just began the bag. I know that because if I scroll down here, it's going to say begin bag. My rate is 100. <clears throat> Let's say that I began this bag and it's 1230. At 1230, I'm going to enter that 100 mLs went into this patient. So the way to do that is you can insert a column, <clears throat> 1230. It's not going to let me do it in the playground because it's in the future, but that is how you would do it. You would then enter in the 1230 column, you would say 100 mLs of volume. And you would hit file, keep entered volume. This is how you do it by the hour. <clears throat> if I want to use the infusion verify button, that is okay. Just make sure that you pull over the correct infusion verify number. For example, if I hit this button right here, it tells me zero, that is correct, because I already put this 100 in here. But watch when I get rid of the 100. If I hit infusion verify, it will um, calculate for you how much blood your patient 
um, what I've received. We just started this, so it's actually not going to give me a volume quite yet. The importance of this is to know that you need to enter the volume just like the INO page by the hour and not to put it all in one column, which can be very confusing in the blood administration flow sheet. So I hope that that uh, clears up any questions or how to document it. The other things that you want to do, you can document in these columns if you used any of these. Um, you have these other options as well. And then you also have all in this list sheet, your oxygen documentation, your respiratory assessment, all of those necessary items that you need um, in relation to blood. Um, we would also make sure we documented this. Uh, no pre-medications given, no informed consent obtained. Yes, we would need to check our consent. So all of these options are here. It's very nice. Everything you need to document for blood is mostly on this entire flow sheet. When it is time to stop the blood, we are going to go ahead and in here, we're going to click a stopped action. So I'm going to insert a column for now just so you can see what that would look like. So let's say that it was four hours later. I'm going to click here and I'm going to hit stopped. It's going to bring me to this sheet. It may ask me for volume. If this is when you are stopping it, this might be the last hour of volume that needs to be documented. If you've already documented that volume for some reason, you can just put a zero here as long as your volume has been documented. For some reason, Epic really wants you to put a volume when you stop it, which is helpful, but just make sure your volume was entered at some point to reflect all the blood the patient received. Like I said, if you already documented in the flow sheet column, maybe before you hit the stop button, um, that's okay. Just put a zero right there. And we're going to put in our stop vitals for our policy and it wanted me to infusion verify, that's because I'm in the playground, right? So I can go ahead and enter. I'm making these up for this scenario. And I have two options. I can accept incomplete or I can accept. Once I complete a blood order, it will gray it out and you will no longer be able to document it. But I'm going to show you what happens if maybe I made an error and I need to go back and fix something related to this documentation of blood. We are gonna go ahead and click accept and complete. And you're gonna see how it disappeared completely. It looks as if, where was that unit? Remember, this is the, um, this is not the unit we just documented on. This was my other order for blood. So to document on the blood transfusion that we just completed, because when you complete it, it completely disappears, you need to go up here and find this button, hide completed. This is super helpful in other areas of Epic as well. Though once I unclick this hide completed, you're gonna see it come back to the flow sheet. And it's going to be in gray because it's been completed. Let's say that I screwed up and I entered the wrong volume, the wrong rate. I need to add volume because I, I see I didn't even document any volume. So what I can do is this. I can click in the box and I'm going to enter right here. Let's say I need to correct this. I'm going to put 100 right here. And then I'm going to file it. It's going to ask me, do you want to reactivate this? Because I am charting on something that is grayed out that has been completed. I'm going to say, yes, yes. I wanted to do that. I want to keep my entered volume. <clears throat> now it's been documented. It's been reactivated. So to close out this documentation, I can right click here. And you can see I need to complete it. So I'm going to complete this right here. This is the one that I just documented on. 
and it's going to complete it again. If I need to reactivate it, it's the same process. I can right click on here and reactivate this transfusion in order to kind of redocument something. But now that I've fixed what I need to fix and I completed it again, I'm done. So as you can see, this is what it looks like. But if I check this had completed, it will disappear and look like I can't fix any documentation. So if you run into this, just remember to always hit this hide completed and it kind of comes back to life for you to document on. This is going to pull over into your PEDS INO and I'm going to show you that right now. We're going to scroll down. And the blood should come over here. Here it is right here on the PEDS INO flow sheet. But just like the blood flow sheet, if I hit the hide completed, this is going to disappear and it's also going to look like it has gone away completely. And there you can see, if I scroll down, it's gone. This Remember, this was the other one. When I do this, you're going to see it come back to life along with some other old items. So this is how you find old items as well. If you need to modify something, you can do it for other things outside of blood. <clears throat> so that's just a brief video of a little bit more about blood documentation, how to kind of um, edit things, fix things. Um, like I said, you can use the infusion verify button for blood. Just be cautious that you are not pulling volume all into one hour and that you are documenting what the patient got per the hour, not just that entire bag of blood because you do not want it to look like you bolused it over one hour or all in one column. Much like our INO video, the blood follows similar rules. So if you want to use infusion verify button, Please do so, but do it with caution and really know what you're pulling over and what you're documenting. Um, and that's my best advice to be able to document your INO correctly for blood. The same process for blood is for platelets or for cryo or any other products. You will always go to your blood flow sheet, go to your transfusion report, Find your product. This will say release, and you can hit release, and then begin blood transfusion to start the process that will activate this row so you can document and document the start of your blood. <clears throat> and that's all I have for blood today for Epic. If you have any questions, let me know. I will send you or create a reference to practice this in the playground on any patient that you want to, so that you can really do it um, as close to real life as possible by using a playground patient. So I will get that out to everyone um, included in this email with this video. So hope this helps y'all. Thanks. Have a good day.